Hugh Everett III was a brilliant scientist and mathematician. He came up with the many worlds interpretation, which is one way to try and understand quantum mechanics. You'll hear more about this later. Everett also figured out how to use La Lagrange multipliers in discrete optimization problems, whatever that means. However, he mostly worked in top secret fields in the Pentagon and probably made amazing breakthroughs that we're not allowed to know about. Hugh Everett III had his own company also, Lambda Corporation, and that was a sort of think tank for brilliant scientists, mathematicians, and problem solvers like himself. Sadly, Hugh Everett III died at the age of 51. If he had lived longer, who knows what amazing things he might have come up with. Before I continue, you better know what quantum mechanics is. In short, it's the study of how things interact at the subatomic level. Sounds simple, right? Well, not really. You see, things are, act differently on the subatomic level. For example, some particles seem to travel faster than the speed of light, or seem to be in two places at once. This effect is commonly known as quantum weirdness. One example is the two-slit experiment. In the two-slit experiment, we have a wall with two slits in it, with a piece of light-absorbing film on one side, and a flashlight slash single photon shooter on the other. On the first run through, we shine the flashlight through. The light is acting as waves, and when the waves intersect, you get a peak. In between these peaks, there are troughs. Peaks show up with white on the film, and troughs are black, so an interference pattern of black and white stripes appears on the light-absorbing film. We then replace the flashlight with a photon shooter a machine that shoots out individual photons, tiny particles of light, one at a time. We, we would expect a pattern like this to appear because there should be no interference since the particles are going through one at a time. However, the same interference pattern shows up, meaning that each photon went through both slits and was interacting with itself. That doesn't make sense, at least not in the macroscopic world, so we set up the photon detectors by each slit to record which one the photon actually went through. The interference pattern disappears this time, leaving us with the normal result. The act of observing actually changed the result. How about the quantum weirdness? There are many interpretations of quantum mechanics that try to explain this. The many worlds interpretation is one of these. It's one of the simpler ones at first glance. The basic idea is that every time a truly random choice is created, such as whether a photon will go through one slit or the other in this two-slit experiment, the world splits, creating two parallel universes. In one, the photon went through the right slit, in the other, it went through the left slit. Many world believers also agree that the related worlds keep interfering with each other until they are observed. Once they are observed, they split. If presented with the results of the two slit experiment, many world enthusiasts would say that the waves of photons are created because all the possible photons in all the possible positions were interfering with each other, therefore creating the interference pattern we see. The positions of the photons were measured at the wall with the slit. In other words, when the detectors were added, the many worlds split before the photons had a chance to interfere. So therefore, the interference pattern was clooped. At first, the many worlds interpretation may seem simple and easy to comprehend because you don't have to be worrying about photons being in two, actually infinite, places at once. However, its true impl implications are mind-boggling. Say we have this two-slit experiment going. Well, how many photons are there going out there? A whole lot. And every time the photon takes a different path, could take a different path, the world splits. That's an awful lot of parallel universes to worry about. So, if you can make that many parallel universes within the course of one, say, 30-second experiment, imagine how many are being created daily. Yearly? Decadely? <laughs> and then, if you think about the whole lifespan of the universe, that's almost infinite parallel universes out there. And with that, there's almost infinite versions of everybody, which has great psychological consequences. And this, for most people, is the main problem with the many worlds theory, the mind aspect. The Copenhagen interpretation is its main competitor. People who favor this interpretation believe that the math works, so why do we have to know why? They also believe that the observer determines the outcome. This theory is known as quantum collapse. When something is observed, it goes from a cloud of probability to a single known state. If a person looked at the results of the two-split experiment 
who favored the Copenhagen interpretation, they would most likely say that the photons were interacting as a cloud of probabilities, and once they were observed with the detectors, that collapsed the cloud and just made one photon in, in each time hit the back wall. Therefore, no interference pattern remained. There are many other interpretations, such as the guide wave interpretation, the hidden variable interpretation, the transactional interpretation, and the wave function collapse theory. However, none of these are as popular as the two I just described, either because the math is not solid, the science is not solid, or they're just too dang complicated. Two. Lagrange multipliers are numbers that are used to graph two-dimensional objects onto three-dimensional things, and are later used to manipulate these figures. Like so. Discrete optimization problems are problems, questions, equations, you get the picture, dealing with discrete optimization, which is using theoretically uninfinitely continuing numbers, or just sometimes plain old integers, to solve optimization problems, which are problems in which a graph, equation, figure, polygon, etc. is collapsed to only its minimum or maximum values. Therefore, in discrete optimization problems, a mathematical function or a given value is collapsed to its minimum or maximum integer values, simplifying it. This also deals with the cloud of probabilities, kind of. For example, let's say we have 28 ounce can of tomatoes. A discrete optimization problem would be, what is the minimum amount of aluminum we would use to make this can? Well, that's something you might use if you were, like, a designer for cans or something. This problem would give you one solid answer, one point on a graph, whereas if you just had a normal problem, how much aluminum can we use to make this can, you'd have a whole range of answers, like a parabola or a line. That's a pretty easy problem to solve either way, but what happens if you introduce five more variables? For this problem, the height and the radius of the can are the variable. These problems can get really complicated. Hugh Everett III was born on November 11, 1930, in Washington, D.C., to Hugh Everett Jr. and Catherine Kennedy. His mother was a journalist specializing in metaphysics and space sciences, so this may have had something to do with what he worked on later in life. His father was in the military, which is one reason why Hugh Everett III took the position at the Pentagon. Everett III spent his whole life in and around the D.C. area except for his time at Princeton. He went to college at the Catholic University of America and majored in chemical engineering, earning his bachelor's degree in the subject in 1953. After this, he continued on to Princeton for three years, where he studied first in, math in the mathematics department, concentrating on game theory, and then switched to physics. The Many Worlds interpretation was actually his doctorate thesis, and although he graduated, the theory was frowned upon by several important scientists of the day. Hugh Everett III was, according to his acquaintances, nice enough, but he was not a family guy. Despite the fact that he had two children and a wife, he concentrated mostly on work. Indeed, his son once went so far as to describe him simply as a lump of furniture sitting at the dining room table. Hugh Everett III died prematurely of a heart attack at 51 in 1982, probably due to the fact that he was a heavy drinker and a chain smoker.